So good morning everyone. Today we're going to have um we're going to see the yeah how to prepare a bit document. So yeah, let's go to the file first. So it's Tuesday, it's the second day. I think you guys are somehow familiar with the document, with the technical document. So um the first task or yeah, one of the very first tasks is preparing a bit document. So uh it's uh, like we're going to see what some fundamental or ma major things that we need to include uh, on our bid documents and what type of common sense do we need to have while preparing them uh, in what part of the documents or the documents could give it like the TOR and another folders are we supposed to give uh, a, a major focus and you know uh, why do we need to be technical while reviewing the documents in order to just that, in order to have a good sense of that, we're going to go through how to prepare a docu document slightly. So what is the document or <clears throat> we can also call it as a bid proposal. It's a document that companies uh, use of outline the products or service pricing in time frame they can offer clients for completing specific projects like so in this case yeah let's just you know there is a note so let's just make it general there is a document uh, you no know, there is a company that is trying to provide uh that is who can provide some specific types of service or sort of service or you know it might be material to it might be human force and things like that and there is also another company that needs to take that or that needs to outsource its project or its specific project for another companies so that there is a competition between different types of different companies in order to take that position right so uh, the proposal that the person will write or the other company who needs to take over the job right is called a bid and the document is a bid proposal okay so a bid proposal are primarily used to showcase companies' qualification and provide details for pricing so that the, pros the prospective client can decide if they are the right fit for the job. So bid proposals are used by individuals and companies. So if if there is if the if the task is a task that can be done with an individual, it's okay to go with an individual and mostly that the cases with a company that is verified as a company or verified to work together with uh to work on that specific job or sector, okay. So it might be companies that are being contracted out to complete projects for a client. So so like because this they can be used anytime one party is providing a good or service for another party, regardless of the, the industry. So there are some elements that we need to figure out or, or that we need to include while preparing a proper or um, a formal bit. So it needs to be formal. So there are some procedures that we need to follow. The first one is we need to include the client's contact information. So it will include the name, address, phone numbers, and email address of the client organization issuing the tender. Okay. Uh, so the tender means that's that specific uh, job or task. This ensures that the contractor knows exactly who the proposal is addressed. Okay, and to provide contact details for any follow-up questions. So there are two types of companies here. The first one is the client, and the another one is the contractor's contact information. And this of the contractor bidding company the contractor or bidding company including the name the address and every address and this is crucial for the client to know who is submitting uh, the bid and how to reach them so we need to include both of the information the information of the client the client or in this case ourselves and the contractors which is the company that we are applying the bid or applying the job for and the job name which is um, so in this case i mean in this bracket i have included something that might uh, in order for you not to crash with this uh, part, if you have noticed, we have included some suggested format of the document that is recommended. So also we can include all those, this format here. So you have the right to follow up any format that you got suitable or that you can say that it's appropriate. But yeah, there are, you know, you can understand some of them that are, that are main or that are major to include from this, uh, there are some aspects that are a mess to be included, but the format and the like the labels and or the naming it's their decision. So we, we're going to include the job name. So in job name it doesn't mean it doesn't mean only the specific titles or name of the project also obviously need to be included. 
uh, but also look, it says this helps in clearly identifying the projects and ensuring that the bids are directed to the correct proposal, right? So in the uh, mentioning the job name, in the job name section, and there it, we can mention that in order to clarify the jobs, like we can mention the introduction of the job or the things. Uh, Where is that? So still? <laughs> okay, I thought it was a equation or thing like things like that. Okay, I think we can proceed. Welcome back, and I forgot. Okay, so yeah, we need to we, we can include um, some specific things or some things that might help us to clearly ident clearly identify the project okay so applying for a company that company might do or might work on different types of projects which is actually for sure those types of companies that will uh, uh, that will create those kinds of opportunities for many other clients they they usually have more than one number of projects or works or tasks to do so we can put some clarification or an introduction for that specific job under the job name so that's uh, we are clearly we can describe clearly or we can communicate with the with the company clearly or with the contractor about the job or the tasks that we're mentioning or that we're talking about and there's the proper the purpose of the proposal and project <clears throat> so here it's a brief explanation of the goal and the objective of the proposal since we have introduced ourselves introduce the company and also introduce the specific tasks that we what that we want to align or that we will that our bid is or the bid document is about so we can put a brief, brief explanation of the goals and the objectives and the overall project so this section outlines why the project the project is being undertaken and what the client aims to achieve helping to set the context for the bid and then there, there's the service or product that would be provided so if you're going to take that project there might be uh, a general uh, outlines or general common senses that we that you will mention in order to do or in order to accomplish that task but you also need to put a detailed description how you're going to address the task or how you're going to solve the problem or the how we're going to do that specific work okay it might be service or it might be providing a product the contractor will provide if awarded the bid so this includes the scope of the work the specifications and any relevant details so it seems like most of the or most of the major things about the bid or your proposal is going to underline on this uh, specific portion or so on the service or product that would be provided. And then there's the pricing of information, which is also a major thing. So you need to put a highlight or a general, depending on your, uh, on the type of bid, okay? Or depending on the TOR, you're going to put maybe highlight or also a breakdown of the cost associated with the proposed service or product. It should include that itemized cost again, depending if there's if it is something that is related with products, you're going to put the uh, values or the amount of the price of the products and also the total project cost and the payment terms and other financial details relevant to the bid okay. There is the additional terms and condition of the agreement, which is uh, any extra stipulations or conditions that apply to the agreement, okay or if might address some things that are some unseen risks or unseen uh, cases that would happen and how to handle those things. So you might include warranties, liabilities, payment schedules, also like the payment according to the payment terms you have mentioned on the pricing information, you can put the payment schedules and dispute resolution procedure. So this section ensures that both parties are aware of and agree to the terms under which the project will be carried out. And of course, the project timeline. So an outline of the project timeline for the project include the start and the end dates. Not only that, the, you need to be uh, reasonable about the dates that you're going to put on your bid document. Also, not only being reasonable, you need to, as long as you want the, so if as a client, you need to take that project, right? So you need to make them, or as much as possible, you need to put, uh, timelines that will correspond to the timeline of the company, okay? So it will really help the client understand the time frame within which the contractor expects to complete their project. 
So this one is from the document. So uh, the suggested format to include inside the document is the summary, the project plan, the methodology and approach, team qualification, previous experience, risk management plan, financial proposal. So the things maybe that are not mentioned in the in this part uh, is um, yeah most of them will align with the introduction part okay so when we say ex executive summary it might say under the journey we have said that we need to mention some parts some parts introduction to the job right so um, after including the job name and the job title as a headline so the introduction the executive summary we can include them under the job name okay the project plan uh, it's Mostly it's about the timeline, the project timeline and the milestone, since you need to be specific. Also, it's considered as in the project plan, you can see it's not it's not only about the timeline, you can see how the person is thinking to achieve or to tackle those. Uh, it's not always a problem, but how he is thinking to finish the project or to do the project. The methodology and approach also mentioned here in the purpose of the, pro the proposal in the project, right? No, no, I mean the service of product that would be provided, right? So like mentioning the service or the product that would be provided, we're going to include the scope, the specifications, and every detail. So we can include the methodology and the approach as that. So also we can take this headlines, okay? And include the things that are mentioned here. <clears throat> and the team quali qualification, of course, this is very important, especially if the thing that you're applying for is something related with mm, technical issues or very much related with the human power, then you need to say, or you need to mention how your team is qualified or is able to finish that project on the given timeline and with the expected or more than expected quality. The previous experience is something that is not mentioned here, or I don't think that there is a place that you can include uh, this thing here. So if you have an experience that is specifically related with this uh, TOR or with these companies or with the specific task, then you need to mention it. So it's, it doesn't need to be any types of experience, okay? But probably if you're applying for a specific thing, for example, if you're a, uh, yeah, for if you're applying for a specific thing, you might you need to be a company that who is doing something related with that task. But the point is, if your experience is not related with that with that task, it's going to be it's not going to be that relevant. In the financial proposal, of course, as mentioned here. Okay, so you can merge both of them and <clears throat> take whatever is right for you. So maybe those I will consider them as some tips. Tips. Okay, yeah. So get uh, the first one is uh, trying to write a bid proposal. You need to get a deep understanding of the project. Okay. So the first one is yeah, the draft and. You need, we need to know exactly what the project entails and what the client is hoping to accomplish. So by this, it, it might not be just going through the, yeah, we need to know what the, the main task or the major thing that we that we need to accomplish do, doing those projects or that the client, or I mean the contractor needs us to accomplish. That's more of, we need to know the details, okay? What type of quality, are they expecting what type of experience do they have before and yeah we need to be familiar with the type of works that that company does and also how they do it you can often do this by reading the job description but ask the client for additional information and then the second one is research the client so as mentioned before learning about the client which is yeah can help you write a big proposal that will impress them and communicate that your company is ideal for so sometimes you're going, of course, you're going to add the things that you will see or that you will get relevant to accomplish some task. Of course, that is very useful, but also knowing about how that company does this, uh, do tasks, since the company will have a better experience on that specific task than us, it would be useful to include those methods directly in our B documents or in our plan to accomplish that task, okay? So if the client is another organization, like research the company and explore its website so that you can evaluate their challenge and values. And also the competition is one of the major things, okay? So we need to see what type of competitors do we have and what type of companies are mostly involved in these types of competition so that it will help us to uh, mention or to, yeah, to mention or to do, to have a method that will, uh, that can win while competing with other 
uh, lines, okay? So by conducting a computer analysis, we can create a bid proposal that helps your company stand out. And consider offering an additional good or service in order to make sure that your company is able to set itself apart from the competition. You could include an additional service or products in your bid proposal. Yeah, exactly. So free of charge, which means if there is something that is not going to cost you much, much of uh, money, time, and human resource, and if that is something that needs to be added or that will add some value for that proposal or for that uh, project, so why not to add it? Okay, it's going to be a plus for us. So try to state out things that you can do for free and something that can add value for the whole task and include it on your proposal. <clears throat> we need to include relevant information. By relevant information, we mean uh, there might be many information that are relevant when you read them, when you know about them, that might seem relevant. But your question is, is that information useful for that company? Okay. Writing that information inside the document will, it might be something that you have accomplished or your company have accomplished, but if adding that thing or if that news is not going to add anything for the contractor, then you don't need to add it. It is op often helpful to include things like sample of your company's work or even reviews from satisfied customers to demonstrate that your company is qualified to effectively and uh, in, uh, efficiently complete the project. And then you need to proofread your proposal. Of course, you, it needs to be free of grammatical errors and you need to communicate or you need to address the, the contractor formally. And yeah, so that you need to double check your proposal. So I think that you need to add uh, from maybe from the, yeah, getting depth understanding of the project and research that light, you need to go through the, Okay. it's not really about what you're going to write or what, what information are you going to include. You need to make sure that what type of uh, uh, filtering mechanism do the company use, okay? So uh, you, uh, probably you've checked the document and there are so many documents that are, not so many actually, there are documents that are mentioned beside that you are, right? That you are is going to tell you what type of uh, projects that the company is doing and yeah, the main thing, the main thing about the, that project in depth, but the other documents will tell you what type of filtering mechanism that the company use, okay? Uh, so maybe if you're eligible or not, uh, what type of financial system or financial terms are the, comp is the company going to use. So if your proposal is going to be, is going to be against that uh, um, documents or eligibility criteria, criteria or terms, this is just a hint. You can find it in inside one of the documents shared. Shared. So if the company is going to be against those mentioned things, so it's going to be or immediately going to be um, relevant. Okay, your proposal is going to be relevant. So in this case or in the teaching and learning part, it's going to be we're not going to consider the proposal. So that. Uh, so you need to go to every detail. So you can consider it as the researching the client. You can go through the folders that are mentioned, the other folders. So make sure what type of things, the things that you're mentioning or that you're uh, specifying and needs to align with the behavior uh, and laws of the company, okay? So yeah, this is the session. Is there any question? Thank you, Okay, uh, thank you for the very informative session. Uh, mine is just uh, a question, a follow-up actually, uh, on those documents that were provided, which which actually ha have been copy-pasted from original documents of GAZ, and thus there's some, there's a lot of disarrangements eh, in the words. So, we are unable to actually proceed with the challenge or assignments efficiently because there are some parts we cannot read very well. Okay, Gita, what do you mean by read? Yeah, the, those documents are um, some real documents that are shared from exactly the, from the company, okay, the GIZ. So, uh, so that it's going to be a real world problem. So, what do you mean by that? They are how soon? 
what do you mean by they are not treatable? Do you mean they are not treatable? You can treat them, or so like it's the co the structure of the documents that are not right. Which one is that, Kitir? Okay, the, the wordings are very clear, but the structure you find some sentences supposed to be here, it got shifted to somewhere else. So yeah. it's a piece of understanding. Thank you. Yes, so uh, it's not that we need we need you to go or we need you to understand. There are some. Uh, it's not that uh, inviting to read the document. I get your point. I'm seeing the document too, but yet the things that I've mentioned earlier, for example, the eligibility in the financial terms are something that I have just seen, like trying to see the document and trying to see the general thing. Those are the things that I have just. So, like going through two of the documents and things like that. So, you are not supposed to understand every details of every document uh, as you're going to go through that you are okay. But you need to understand what the document uh, actually. Just first try to understand what the general thing about that document is. Okay, so so that you need writing your read document, you will understand which part of that document is related with. Uh, the specific task, and if you get it relevant, it does mean that every document have a thing that is that will uh, that will not make you really write your big document. Okay, but you're going to get some information from that. So yeah, try to relate while writing your big document. Try to understand every folder what they are talking about, and go to uh, some of the folders which you think they will help you for the big documents. Okay. Guitar, yeah, I have just so an emoji. Okay, thank you. Other question. So, is that clear? Everything is clear? If anyone? Is that clear? Okay. I hear profile, so stand. Okay, then how soon can we, like exactly after two minutes? Yeah, I will share the document now. You can access them. Okay. Okay, thank you everyone. Good luck with your task and goodbye. Okay.